Hi guys, we are going to be making this in the hoop stocking. It's really cute by Parker on the porch. This is the six by 10 size. You can see how big it is um, with my hand. That's really cute size. I really like it. Um, you can see there's the opening. We have the liner in there and here's what my back looks like. Super cute. Here's another one I made. This is the exact same size. Okay, there and there. They are super cute and fun and really fast to make. So um, what you're going to need, I'm going to be using this fabric in the tutorial. It's really pretty and shiny. This was from Joann's. I just bought it recently, so they probably have more. You're going to need um, two pieces of the outside fabric, two pieces of the liner. Then I use a lightweight, fusible interfacing one sheet on the outside fabric so you're going to need interfacing and I just use a lightweight one and then um, your stabilizer and your hoop I'm doing the 6 by 10 size and there's lots of sizes that you get but I'm doing the 6 by 10 size so I have my 7 by 12 hoop with one sheet of tear away let's go to the machine and we will get started I'll show you how to put this together Okay guys, lots of people ask what machine I have, so I'm just gonna start saying it at the beginning. I own the Baby Lux Spirit. That's what I'm stitching on right here and I really like it. It goes to um, an eight by 12 hoop if you do the upgraded software. It's a really good machine and I really like it. Okay, so this is um, my hoop, one sheet of tear away. I have the design loaded right here. Our first step you can see up here is our placement stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch that directly onto my stabilizer. I will come back and show you what it looks like. Okay guys, this is what the placement stitches look like here. Hopefully you can see it because they're white on here. I probably should have used a different color, but there you go, it's right there. This is how you know what size fabric you need to place down. You just go ahead and measure the widest point of your stocking and then the height, the longest part. You just need a piece of fabric that goes past all of these stitch lines. You can do it this way by measuring it yourself or if you have the written PDF open, you can look in there too. She went ahead and wrote what size pieces of fabric you need for each stocking size. So if you don't wanna measure it yourself, you can also go look in the written PDF. But that's how you measure it. So I have four pieces of fabric which you need. You need two liners that are bigger than this. So I have this liner and I have this liner right here all cut out and ready to go and then I ironed it. And then I have my outside of my stocking fabric right here. And then I also have another one which is the back. Now the only thing that I add to the outside pieces of my fabric I add interfacing because I don't want it to be so flimsy. So what you do for interfacing, I went ahead and added one sheet of lightweight fusible interfacing. You can just type that into Google and it will bring up lots of them. It doesn't matter what brand you use. Um, the way it comes though, if you've never put it on anything, is it has a smooth side right here and then the other side is, it kind of has like a glue dot feeling. It's kind of a little scratchy. The rough side of the interfacing goes on the wrong side of your fabric. This is the right side of my fabric, the wrong side of your fabric. So the rough side goes on the wrong side of your fabric and then you just iron it with heat and it adheres to your fabric and it makes it a little thicker. So that's what interfacing does. So I suggest using one sheet on the front of your fabric and then one sheet on the back of your um, stocking fabric. I don't place anything on the liner. I just do it here. If you want it thicker, then go for like a medium fusible interfacing. I do not suggest using fusible fleece on these. The designer Jen tried it and it was just too thick. Um, but it is a personal preference, so you can do whatever you please. But those are just the suggestions from the testers, okay? So I have two sheets of fusible interfacing uh, attached to my front and back fabric, and I have my two liners. So our fabric's ready to go. The next step is optional for which way you do it. You can do it one of two ways. One, there is a file that's in a separate file from the stocking that has one line. So what you would do is you would stitch that placement line. I'm not gonna do it this way, but I'm just gonna tell you, you would load a hoop, you'd stitch that placement line, you would put your fabric right side up. So here's your fabric. You'd put your fabric right side up a, a little bit past that line. There's gonna be a line. And then you take the this fabric, you can't tell a right side and a wrong side, but you would take the right side. Say this is the right side and this is the right side. You would put the right sides together 
on top of each other like this, and then you would stitch that line. That's going to, at the very top, it's going to stitch those two together, and then you take it out of your hoop, you pull off all of the stabilizer, you have one line here, and then what you do is you would flip these two fabrics, and it would be like this, and you would iron. That's how you use the hoop version. I'm going to go sew it on my sewing machine because it's not worth the time to load an entire hoop, waste all that stabilizer for one line. I would rather just stitch that on my sewing machine, but I wanted to explain it to people that don't actually own a sewing machine. So I'm going to show you how to do it on the sewing machine. For those that have one, it's really fast, really quick, but then I also explained how to do it in the hoop. Okay, so I'm going to bring you the sewing machine and I'll show you what I am doing. Okay guys, I explained how to do this part in the hoop. I'm going to show you how to do it on a sewing machine and it's just faster on the sewing machine. So this is the right side of your fabric. And then you take the right side of your fabric here, you put right sides together. Whichever is the top, like if this is directional, you want, you're gonna be sewing on the top of the directional. So you're, like if this is a heart, it would be facing you, okay? So you do right sides together from your liner and the front of your bag, you just line it up like that. And come over here. This is just a sewing machine. I'm just going to do a straight stitch and I'm just doing a little bit of the thing. It doesn't even matter exactly how much you're doing because I have extra on the bottom of this fabric. And I'm, like, and I'm just sewing it really super fast across. It doesn't have to be super pretty and you are done. So it just went ahead and sewed one line. You're just sewing the right sides together. You flip it like this. You can see that there's a line. You go ahead and fold this down like this. And now you're gonna iron. You're gonna iron your fabric right here. And then you are good to go. This is gonna be the part we use on the back of our stocking. So that is all you do. It is super quick, super easy. You can do it either way. Hey guys, we're back at the hoop. So we have our placement stitch here. We're gonna go ahead and take our single front sheet of fabric that we have right here. You're gonna do wrong side against your stabilizer. So right side facing up towards you. Oops. And you're just gonna get this completely over all your placement stitches. It doesn't matter exactly where, just it has to cover them all. You're gonna wanna get it straight. And then of course the top of your stockings up here. So make sure your fabric, directional fabric's going the right way and you're not sideways. Once you're all set with your fabric, go ahead and run stitch step two. It's just gonna go ahead and tack down your fabric to your stabilizer. So it's doing that exact same stocking shape, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch that. I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, that's what it looks like. We're gonna go ahead and do the next step, which is gonna be the placement line for your trim fur up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch that directly on there. And I'll come back and show okay, you guys. That's what that placement line looks like right there. Now we're gonna go ahead and place our fabric. You need a bit, a piece of fabric that's big enough to go over the stitch lines right here, the square. You need a little bit extra because we're gonna flip it up. So I'm not really precise with my fabric measuring. I just took a big chunk. Obviously it's too big, which is fine. So the way we wanna place this, you wanna decide what side of the fabric you wanna use. You can see this side's a little smoother than this side. This side's more rough and not as smooth. Um, you can choose whatever side you want, but if you have fabric that has designs or something, this is how you would determine which way you want. Whichever side of the fabric you want, I'm gonna go with this side. I like the smoother side. The side you want to be facing up needs to be face down. So right sides together. The right side of this fabric is right here. I'm gonna call this the right side of my fabric, the smoother side. You're gonna put them face down together like this, okay? Now you're gonna go ahead and move it up to this line up here. You're gonna get it just a little bit over that line. Now the next step is going to go ahead and do that exact same stitch, tacking this down, just one line. So you just want it right on the edge of the line that it can hit. Now that after that, you're going to flip this up. So ultimately, you're going to be seeing the design on the underneath side like this. Okay? So if you're placing your fabric, you're going to want to go ahead, say this is the right side with say hearts are going this way, facing you. You want your design going facing you. You're gonna go ahead, this is how you want it to look. This is the right way. So say your hearts are facing you right here. This is how you want it. Now you're gonna flip it upside down like this 
and pull it straight down. That's how you're gonna to wanna to place your fa fabric so your design's going the right way and you have the right side of your fabric in the end, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch the next line, which is just gonna tack this down right here. It doesn't have to be exact. The only thing that has to be exact is your fabric has to be big enough to flip up in the end. It has to get past these stitch lines in the end, okay? So I'm gonna stitch it. I'll come back and show okay, you. Okay, guys, this is what it looks like. So this is where you can test to make sure you had your fabric placed right. It has the line right here you can see. This is where you pull it up and face it up. Now, if your design can get past your stitch lines up here, your fabric can get past these stitch lines all the way, and your design is facing the way that you wanted it to face, then you did a great job and we are ready to move on. And you can trim this excess off, you can fold this up, and then you can stitch the next step, which is basically gonna go like this, tacking this fabric down, okay? If you messed up, then I suggest you flip your hoop over like this and take a seam ripper and just seam rip these stitches right here. I just go up and seam rip all those and it will release this piece of fabric and try again, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this. I'm gonna fold this up. I'm gonna put it back on my machine and I'm gonna stitch step five, which is just gonna tack that down. I'll come back and show you. Okay guys, that's what it looks like right there. I wanted to say one more thing. I'm not using water stabilizer on top because normally you use that with fur or towels or anything. But the purpose of that is to keep your stitches up above your fur so they don't sink in is one of the purposes. And I don't care if my stitches stink, sink in. It doesn't matter to me, so I didn't use it on here. If you have, and my fur is short enough, but if you have a fur that's really super long and obnoxious, you really should put water stabilizer on top so the foot of your machine doesn't get caught in the long strands of your fur. So if you're using that type of fabric, I would put a piece of stabilizer or water stabilizer over this. If not, then it works perfectly fine like I did. I just wanted to point that out because I know some of you watchers are going to be using really super long fur and it's going to do that. Okay, so the next step is stitched up number six. It's going to go ahead and do the placement stitch for the toe and the heel. I'm going to go ahead and stitch that directly on the fabric right here and I'll come back and okay, show you guys. That's what those look like right there. That just shows you what size fabric you need for the toe and the heel. So I just um, got some fabric. I'm going to do the same side, like the less furry, this side's furry, or I'm going to do the less furry side to match the top. You just need a piece big enough to get over that placement stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and do that like that. Make sure I get over it all the way. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and stitch step seven, which is going to tack this down. So I'll come back and show That's you what it looks like right there. Now we're going to go ahead and do the heel. I'm going to take the right side of my fabric, the less furry side. I'm going to make sure that it fits completely over. And then I'm going to go ahead and tack down that with step eight. I will come back and show you. Okay, this is what your design looks like so far right here. We're gonna go ahead and trim right here and right here to get off this extra fabric because we are gonna be going ahead and doing a satin stitch right here. So we need all this excess fabric off this side. I'm just gonna cut what I can and throw it away. I'm just using applique scissors. Applique scissors are curved. It helps you cut around applique which is what we're doing now i take extra time when you have fur to get it as close and cut down as i can because these satin stitches are going to have a hard time not sinking into this fabric if you don't and then you will see your fuzzy fabric like especially if I use like a white thread right here, you're really gonna see the red through the white thread because this fabric is so furry and thick. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some time to trim this really well and then I'll show you when I'm done what it looks like. Okay guys, this is what it looks like right here. We are in fur and gnome season with all this fur and stuff, so make sure you have one of these. It's just tape, sticky tape, and you can take each layer off. They're really inexpensive, but they're really valuable when you're using fur, because this fur gets everywhere. Okay, so I'm just gonna get some of this out of here so you can see how close we got. 
Um, the other thing I want to show you, so what we're doing next is the satin stitching right here along this. And you want to make sure you don't see the fur on the outside over here. And the fur is thicker. It's easy to do on stuff like woven, but the fur is really thick. So you want to cut it back a little bit so you don't see it. And just say I'm missing a little spot right there. Okay, so let me show you. It's really cut close and we're ready to go. It's gonna go, you don't need to cut any of this other stuff. This is gonna be flipped in and we'll cut it out at the end. Um, but you want this side really close and this side really close because we're gonna go do satin stitches now. So that's what it looks like and I'm gonna meet you at the machine. Okay, we're back on our machine. We're gonna go ahead and run step nine, which is gonna do um, a really cute blanket like tape stitch, that little stitch, oops right there, that stitch. So you can do these in different colors if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and do this in white so you can see what white a contrasting color shows up against these because my other two were the same color as the fur. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this white and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, that's what that stitch looks like right there. So we're gonna go ahead and do the next step, which is the stitch step 10. It's gonna go ahead and do the satin stitching on both sides. Okay, so I'm gonna run that. I'll come back and show you what it looks hey like. Hey guys, that's what the satin stitches look like right there. So that's what it's looking like so far. Okay, the next step, we're gonna go ahead and do a placement step to show us where to place the back of our fabric. So it's just gonna go ahead and do a placement line right here. It's gonna do a little bit lower down here and then go up and then go along this line and then a little lower and down. What you wanna pay attention to are the two lower lines. It's gonna do a little lower line here and a little lower line here. It's kinda of hard to see because you usually have fur up here. So pay attention to where it's going and then I'll show you what we're doing next. Okay, this is what your stocking looks like so far. I brought you over here so I can show you a little better. You can see that it stitched a tiny little stitch right here. It stitched right here, it went up, it stitched along this whole same line, and then it went down a tiny bit and it stitched right here. Now the whole purpose of this next step is to make sure that you place your fabric underneath this line. You do not want any of your fabric getting caught in this next stitch, in the stitch that goes across this line right here. Because if you do, it closes your stocking and then you do not have an opening. You want an opening. So technically this back fabric is placed a little bit under. So this is how we do it now. So your next step is to go ahead and take your fabric that we prepped right here and we're gonna go ahead and take the right side of your fabric. This is the right side of my fabric. Remember we have this edge that we sewed together up here. You're gonna take the right side of your fabric and you're gonna place it right side down like this and make sure that this is at the top, the two that are sewed together. Remember this opening, this is open still down here. I can get it. Sorry, my dogs are barking right there. Opening right here. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and pull it straight up here and you want it to be underneath this line. That's the whole, make it straight and make it under the line. And you can see that your tack down was, let's see where it is, right here, right there. I'm sorry, right there. So you wanna place your fabric right along that. You want it straight, you want the direction going. I'm gonna pull down my, liner so it's all straight you are going to line it up right there once you have it exactly where it needs to be make sure you are under this line that's the most important thing it's going to go ahead and stitch all the way around right there okay so i'm going to go ahead and do that i'll come back and show you okay i'm on the hoop i'm going to show you on the hoop as well i have it placed underneath that line i have it straight I have right sides together and then also i make sure that these didn't flip up or anything when i put my fabric together you don't want those stitching up because it's going to stitch around that as well okay so you have everything straight everything flat you have right sides together and you're not over. See how my thing is still there? My line's up there. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and stitch the next step, which is gonna go ahead and stitch down and around, and I'll come back and show you. Okay, this is what it looks like right here. Super cute, we are getting there. So now the next step's gonna run a little placement stitch right here. So go ahead and run that, and I'll come right back. I ran it, it's a little darker right here. It goes from like right there up to here is your placement stitch. 
for your ribbon right here, okay? This is fold over elastic. I'm gonna use fold over elastic. You can use ribbon, you can use whatever you want. I'm using thicker stuff, so I kind of place it off to the seam right here and it works just fine. If you wanna use this placement and tack down, you can. Um, I wanna show you what this looks like though. So this is what it looks like right here. We are creating this right here. So it stitches on the inside of your bag right here. See how it's stitched? into the inside and mine's super thick so I suggest making this a little bit longer than you're expecting because what happens you have to place this face down so it doesn't get caught in any of the stitches and then when it's done it just folds over and up so when you have your stocking together it hangs like this but you lose a tiny bit of your length here so just make sure you have it a little bit longer depending on what you want but it hangs really cute perfect okay so this is what we're gonna do you're gonna you have your placement stitch so it kind of shows you where to put it I'm gonna put the right sides out that's the wrong sides I'm putting the wrong sides together you're gonna put the stuff you want to keep on the inside so the hoop stays the little loop stays on the inside Sorry, I only have a tripod on my desk, not where my embroidery machine is, so it's a little hard to do some of these little steps. Okay, so you're just gonna wanna make sure wherever you place it, these stitches are gonna, it's gonna go over this line, so that's where it's gonna catch. Now this is just a tiny little stitch, so if you're using a tiny little thing, then it would get across all of it. Mine will not. I place mine right here on the edge before it goes above this. Okay, so I just place it off to the edge at an angle. You want it angling down like this, sorry, like this, and then I would tape here and there, right underneath, see, right underneath, angled down, and then when it gets turned, it will angle up, okay? So this is where I'm gonna tape it. I just take some tape and tape both sides. Like this. I'm going to tape it down and then I'll come show you what we do next because I can't do it one hand. Okay, I went ahead and placed this down. This is what it all looks like right here. The next step is to go ahead and place your ribbon or what's going to come out right here. See, there's mine right there. It um, actually stitches on the inside, facing angle down like that into your seams. And then when you're done, it folds over and pulls up like that okay now the placement stitch right here is the next stitch it's place it tells you where to place your ribbon and then the step after it tacks it down my it mine is way too thick for it it only stitches like right here and that's good for really thin but I'm like doing super thick so um wide is what I'm saying so you just really need to place it along this line you can use the tack down and push this up a little bit more if you want I just make mine a little bit longer so it can stick out further and I place it right here okay so this is going to get stitched into the liner when we put the liner on which is next so you went ahead and did your placement and then you did your tack down replacement for your um, ribbon right here. I'm using fold over elastic, but you could use ribbon, fold over elastic. You could use fabric. Um, if you sewed it together, you can use whatever you want really. The, it turns out really super cute. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stitch the next step. You are going to take your liner. This is the right side of your liner. You're going to take, mine are the same, but you're going to take the right side of your liner, face it down, right sides together like this. Make sure you get over all of these stitch lines and you're going to go ahead and stitch the next step and it's going to go ahead and stitch around and I'll come back and show you. Okay guys, here we are. That's what it looks like. It left a little hole for us to turn through, but it's stitched all the way around. Other than that, this is what the top of your hoop looks like. This is what the bottom of your hoop, hoop looks like. So in this stocking, the liners go together on top. In bags, we put them underneath. So I hope you caught that. I didn't like point that out. But yeah, it was all on the top of your hoop. So we can take this out now. We are done stitching. Now you could take all the stabilizer off. just to get the edge. Okay, bear with me a second while I pull this out.
Okay, got all the stabilizer out. Now we're just going to cut around the bag. We're going to look on this side right here. It's kind of like a bag. You have to close this as well. So I just kind of cut to the side. Cut around. It doesn't have to be super pretty because you're just throwing all this part away. And we're turning it so you're not really going to see this. Don't cut any of your stitch lines. I was getting kind of close there. Okay, I leave a little bit right there. Same as you do in the bag, because you want to keep your liner right there. And then I cut this excess off, so your liner I hold it, try to hold it straight and don't cut at an angle. And just cut this excess off like that, okay? Now you go ahead and flip this. It should be fairly easy because you're not using such thick fabric and you have some fur in here, but other than that, it's not too bad. So it should turn pretty fast and easy. Let me take this tape off. So you can see that we have a hole here, which is good. <laughs> if we would have placed this too far up, this would have stitched together and it went open. So you need that. So that's good. That worked out good. Now we're going to close this hole really fast. And um, holes can be closed several ways. I take this excess fabric. I push it in on itself like this. I try to hide the stitch line right here, even though this is like the inside of your stocking, you don't really see it. And I use these little wonder clips just to hold it in place so it stays straight. Okay, so now we're going to close this. I use glue. I use this glue right here. Um, it's clear. It's pretty fairly cheap. It goes on fairly fast. Um, a lot of people use the fusible hem tape. You can use that um there's um hem tape that you put heat to it like um basically you go ahead and put a strip right here and then you put heat in it adheres it together there's tape this is the tape that the designer uses i'll show you that's called peel and stick fabric tape right here it's this right here and you basically just oops, take it put it in on your fabric right there, you rub it down, you pull this other, it's really sticky, you pull this other liner off and then you just hold it and it adheres it together. Um, I don't like to use this, it's really sticky and it's really hard for me to do, I prefer the glue, but um, lots of people prefer that, so if you're interested in trying different ways to see what you like, other people ladder stitch it, they take um, a needle and thread and sew from the inside back and forth and then if you pull you don't see the seam you don't see the stitching at all some people will do this just really thin line on their sewing machine because this is the inside and in the middle and you don't really see it there's lots of ways to close it same as bags so just do whatever your preferred method is I'm just gonna go ahead and do glue so I put a little bit of glue here I push it down I put a clip on I put a tiny bit of glue up here That. If I have any excess, I just wipe it off with my finger or some fabric. And then I just go ahead and do this. I wait three to five minutes. That's how long it takes to like kind of dry it and let it set together. And then I will come back and show you what we do next. Okay, it is ready to come off. You can see that it's not a hole anymore. It's straight. It's fine. Okay, so now you flip through the top hole right here. I'm going to use my little turning system. 
thing to get all the edges out. Be kind of careful because this is all fabric. Okay, now I take this right here and I just flip it up like that. This is stretchy, so it kind of pulls, which is cute. Okay, now I'd probably go iron it, but we are done. I'm probably gonna make a white tag right here so the white stands out with a cute little tag. And we are done with our cute stocking. Look how cute it is, let me angle this a little bit more so you can see it. Very cute. Very easy. This is the six by 10 size, so you can get a lot bigger if you have bigger hoops. But this is a great size. I like, this is a cute size, not a cute, like I would do bigger for like my kid or something, but this is a really cute size for a gift. It fits, um, it'll fit all sorts of stuff. Let me, like it's even a little big for like a gift card, look how tiny the gift, just so you can see the gift card. So you can see in comparison for this size. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe and go ahead and click on the little bell notifications link so it will notify you when I upload a new tutorial. Um, please thank, like if you liked this video. It helps me get seen and I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Let me know if you have any questions and I can't wait to see your designs.